Okay, so I was given the green light, so we're going to get started. So again, to everyone who just joined, uh, welcome to this uh, practice webinar. My name is Joel, and I'm a um, practice solution architect here. And I'm extremely happy today to have a uh, visiting presenter in this case. Uh, uh, Dirk Jan de Grok, he's a, an old friend as we were just talking before. Uh, to give a very short intro, and I'm, I'm sure that Derkian will also go ahead and, and talk about that, but first of all, Derkian is from the Netherlands, where he works for uh, Valori as a test manager and also an agile transition coach. Um, within that job, he basically helps companies uh, with their scrum adoption and also embedding their quality strategies within their process and their cultures. Uh, he's uh, very keen, and I've actually seen them providing very, very good workshops. I've attended at least a couple of them as well as trainings, and he's a regular speaker in multiple conferences worldwide. And as I was telling him, we're actually meeting uh, later in October in QA and test in Bilbao. So if anyone's going to be in Bilbao uh, in October in QA and test, just uh, make sure to come and say hi to both of us. Yeah, and join us for a beer or a good talk. Yeah. Uh, I'll go for the beer. You can talk with Dirk Jan later on. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, uh, he has written quite a lot of books and he's published in a number of magazines and publications. He also has a pretty interesting blog of his own. Uh, one of the things that is very uh, important to mention, and again, it's a very big honor to have him here. Back in 2014, he was actually awarded the uh, Eurostar Testing Excellence, Test Excellence Award, which is uh, not given lightly, and, and he really deserves it for his work in the community. And back in 2016, he published his latest book, pretty good read, by the way, which is called um, Agile in the Real World, Starting with Scrum. Today, Dirk Jan will actually talk to us uh, about how a test manager can make a difference even in today's uh, new testing reality. And again, it's a pretty cool uh, session. I just want to tell everyone that um, you can ask questions during the session. You have a Q&A uh, window in the session. Uh, we're going to let Dirk Jan, though, go over the slides by himself, and we'll, he will be answering questions towards the end. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them using the Q&A, and he will address them. Uh, towards the end of the session. So uh, with that, I leave you to uh, Dirk Jan, and uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, we, we have a very big crowd today, because I heard there were about 700 people uh, planning to participate. Uh, and that makes this an interesting topic, because a lot of people seem to be interested in, in this. And I reckon most of you are test managers, and, and you're triggered by the title. And maybe some of you are triggered by the title because you are a test manager and you're wondering where does this road lead me to and what should I do to stay in my profession? How can I make a difference for the organization, be rewarded now and in the new future? Um, I'm always having difficulties with ex ex uh, estimating how many organizations are doing Scrum or in an agile context, but it's a vast amount of organizations that are growing. So most test managers, and you, I count on among them, uh, probably have encountered and experienced that things are changing rapidly. So I'd like to start off with a quote of one of my favorite artists, Peter Gabriel, and he wrote a song, Downside Up, and in that he says, the only constant that I'm sure of is this accelerating change, a rate of change. And I thought it's a very nice sentence because things are happening so fast nowadays and there's so many things changing and they will be changing even more and faster tomorrow. Uh, so the acceleration might be the only constant. And we have to cope with that. And we is, of course, we as businesses, as people, um, organizations, uh, IT personnel, and not in the last, uh, of course, we as testers and test managers. And Peter Gabriel is not an IT person, so he sings nice songs, uh, but they're not about IT. Would he be an IT singer? He might be singing a completely different tune and singing titles like Agile Scrum, CI, CD, DevOps, wondering what songs that would make. Uh, but these are some of the trends that I think we are coping with, we are dealing with. Uh, so we're talking about Agile, big thing, of course, test-driven development, alpha, beta, tester, and maybe some of the smaller words, uh, the blockchain and the test bots, uh, the augmented reality, which are more futuristic trends. Uh, is AI on there? It should be on there. Um, where not everybody will be working on right now, but might be in the near future. So there's a lot of things coming our way, 
and uh, the way we organize our work and our organization, organizational being run are changing big time. So how do we maintain our position as a test manager if we want that? Now can we contribute to quality? Now can we add value? And that's basically the, the goal of, uh, of my, uh, my webinar today. Uh, I'd like to find out with you where we can add value in today's context. And the roadmap that I made is a quite simple one with four stops along the way uh, where I would like to look at test management in a traditional context, just have a little look back like what did test managers actually do in the old days in the traditional context um, and what's changing when we go agile and maybe even beyond that. Uh, and then I would like to share some fair settings in the real world, uh, some experience and some results of workshops that I did um, to give you an idea in what settings test management kind of roles do add value in my opinion. And then we make the final transition like, what does that mean for you? How can you add value as a test manager? And I hope you agree with that as a proposition. But uh, since I'm only sitting behind the screen, I cannot see you nodding. Um, so let's look at the traditional test manager. Uh, what does the test manager do? If you look in your own uh, experience in your past, uh, what kind of activities were you most keen on working on? What activities did you do? the most spend the most time on what did you find the most important ones and maybe a good question is what are the ones that were most rewarded by the company most most appreciated that might be different as well well i made a little list and you can see the little guy in the in the corner is looking is a young guy and he's looking with some awe at this list is that all you have to do as a test manager yes that's all that we did in the traditional context as a test manager so we were, I'm not going to read all the things down, I think, uh, but uh, we were saying in the ISKB kind of thing, we should be working on a test policy as the, the highest hook in the organization, where we say like testing and quality is important. So we have management commitment. Uh, I didn't do that that much because many organizations were not really up to that yet, but I spent a great deal of time making up test strategies, whether that was for the team, small test strategy, or maybe for bigger for organizations, which I find a very interesting game. And if we have a test strategy, we need budget and people resourcing for that. And, and we have to fight for the quality because we all know the people that have been around longer, that we had big projects that were high risk, full exposure, uh, and, and then a lot of adoptions that could go wrong. And then as a test manager, we said, oh, we want to have this strategy and we need to do proper testing. And they say, yeah, but you only got a limited budget. That was the end of the game. Well, not the end because we invited product risk analysis. So we say we do the most important things. Um, but that's a little bit how it went in the old days. And of course, uh, we spent a lot of time on getting the environments ready, planning releases, the release advice and the test report is a very important thing. But at the end of the run, we said we did a lot of testing, but before you go live, I want to tell you what I find of, of, of the, the application or the system. And I want to share my results and give you an advice whether you should go live or not. Another thing that I spend a lot of time on, and what you will see that is disappearing a little bit more, is the defect triage. I, I had a lot of big meetings where we had long lists running through all the defects that were being found. And we were planning whether they should be included in the next release or solved, or whether they were changes or high priority, or we needed a workaround. And um, we'll see that that. Uh, well, diminish in, in the agile world. So there's a lot of things that test managers, traditional test managers, spend the time on. The interesting question, of course, and I was already proceeding that a little, is what happens if we enter the agile world? And I assume that a lot of you already are familiar with the agile context, so I'm not going to go into much detail about that. But of course, one of the biggest differences is that testing becomes part of development, and it's no longer uh, the responsibility of the tester, no, the whole team is responsible for testing. So that makes it a little bit more difficult for test managers to manage, of course, because they're not developers, managers, they're test managers. And another thing is that we should emphasize testing, of course, but in the ideal world, uh, within Agile, when an item is done, it's quality and it's tested. So what's the need for a test manager? And if we go beyond that and we go into continuous integration and deployment, automation becomes more and more important. Um, and most of the tests are automated and are becoming part of the delivery pipeline. So that means that tests are being launched from the build server. 
So we don't even have to start the test or think about starting the test. They are twice tested, started automatically. And when tests fail, the build is broken down and will no longer be migrated to the next stage. So we don't even have to look at the results because it's all done automatically. So there's not much management needed for that. I can imagine some people say, yeah, that's over exaggerated. And of course we need to still emphasize the testing and uh, not, not all the testing is being done automated, etc." I agree with you, but uh, this is just to paint the picture in a rough idea where we're going to. I like this blog on, uh, on the TechWell community by Nishi Grover Gark. Uh, I think I pronounced it right that way. Uh, and she wrote a nice blog saying uh, five ways uh, where testing is different from traditional testing. The five point that she mentions is that says testers are no longer involved in the end, but are continuously involved. So if you go shift left, if you go into refinement, you talk with business analysis, you're part in defining the solution, you're part of development, of course. Uh, and if you do more DevOps kind of thing, you have a big hook and a line with the, the, the operations teams. And you're working as a developer, maybe with the quality of your glasses on, uh, but you're working as a developer in all of those stages. And since we go uh, in a fast speed and we have small iterations, we need to repeat our tools uh, or tests. So tools are essential. So there's a more focus on having the tools to execute the test, help us analyze the results, start the tests, design the test, etc. We need to speed up. So that's a thing that changes, says Nancy. Um, she also says, since we are talking with a lot of people, the ones that I mentioned, the business, additionally, the users, others, um, we need to have more than one skill. We cannot be only skilled in testing, uh, only technical. There's a lot of communication going on. And so we, we need to, to grow our skills. And I think that's not new. Uh, there have been many talks. I gave some workshops on it as well, uh, talking about T-shaped and pie-shaped professionals where uh, where we need to have generic tools and, the, and the, the lags of the pie stand for specialisms that we gain or learn and how we add value by knowing more of them. And so I talked about the communication and since we have fast iterations, we need to set everything in place to have quick feedback as a tester. So that's a game changer, I think, because we need to think about how we can create feedback on the design, create feedback uh, on, on the solution that we're making, how it's being used in production, but also on the way that we test and what things we miss in the test so we can improve our testing. So agile testing differs in a lot of things, not in all, of course. Um, since things are changing that quickly and since testing is changing that quickly in the agile context, uh, five years ago, uh, some Dutch guys, eight of, eight of us, uh, wrote a book for the Dutch Testnet uh, Association. It's the group for the, the Association for Testers in the Netherlands where we said uh, we're going to investigate what the changes are in the community, in the society, in the business, uh, and the IT, and how we do our testing and what that means for testers in general. And we wrote a book about it, which is unfortunately only available in Dutch. But it was called Set Your Course, Prepare for the Future, because there's future and trends in testing. And uh, this book is five year, years old, so last May, I think it was May, we had a, another conference of the Dutch Testnet Association where we had a, a workshop with four of the original authors who said we need to benchmark this and reassess some of the things that we said. We want to know how our predictions became true and whether we omitted things or how far we are in the process of changing. So we made a workshop where we asked the participants how did your work change over the last five years? We had some good discussions where, where we as authors shared our experience of things that we thought, well, we predicted that pretty well. And uh, it's actually happening, but much faster than we thought. We didn't think it, things would go that fast, uh, but also some things that we didn't predict. But the most important thing was the part where we let the participants explain what they found out, how they experienced their work, and things that they were... Uh, or doing more or doing less. So we used the, the retrospective starfish for them to make a brainstorm of activities. And if you combine all those sessions, uh, this is the list that you get. You see there's a lot of activities that they say we started with new stuff, uh, but also some things that they say we stopped doing that or we reduced that. And it's interesting, since we were talking about the test management role, to identify in this table what activities the test manager could do or should be doing. 
and whether that is diminished or is maybe increased. So I just pick out a few of the items that John Mark would read, where you say like, if we stopped writing detailed test plans, and if we stopped writing manual test reports, what should the test manager do? That saves a lot of time, right? If we have real-time test results and we're working on that, we don't need that, those 10 manual test reports anymore. If we stop to have formal acceptance because items that are done are launched into production straight away uh, without really a formal acceptance process. If we have less reporting and logging since we have real-time results, what's the need for a test manager? Another interesting thing is that I found out that people say we're working less on uniform tests. Within Agile context, of course, we give teams more responsibility and more freedom to organize their way, the work in a way that works for them best. So the old TPI, test process improvement, and the old quality assurance rule where we say we have templates and we want everybody to test in a certain way or to write it down in a certain way has become less and diminished. Uh, so some advocate work that the test manager could be do, have been doing is reduced. So yes, looking at this, we can tell that the test manager is not needed that much anymore. But you can look at this table the other way around, of course, as well. And so in green are some of the activities that I say, these are test management tasks that still have value. And we, we're increasing the feedback from the customers, so we need to organize or test, so we get customer feedback. Might be something nice for the test manager to do. We have more product risk analysis, more end-to-end -end testing. I think that's an important one. The end-to-end -end testing, the integration testing, is something that many organizations are struggling with. We have more value-driven decision-making. We do more production data usage. We have data-driven decision-making. We even do auditing in order to improve our testing, to ensure that our testing is right or that we meet compliance things. All things that test manager could be doing or should be doing. And what they say, I'm glad they, they came up with that. They say, what we always should keep is have a quality focus within our teams and, and, and we keep that as a team. And we need to do some hardcore testing and we need to keep on learning because things are changing quite rapidly in an ever increasing rate. Um, so I noticed that, that some of the older testers are complaining that some of the younger testers, and if you are a younger tester in this webinar, no offense meant, uh, don't know their basic testing. They don't know the design techniques, for instance. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe we should emphasize more hardcore testing, and maybe we should be more flexible in how we can apply our hardcore knowledge within new context. So that might be great tasks for test managers. But beware before you sit up straight and say this is a good story. Within test manager or uh, within agile, there is no role for test manager. So we should do something to convince organizations that we have a role, that we have a place. Because they know they have a product owner, they know they have a scrum master, but they don't know they need a scrum test manager. So we need to do something, show or added value for that. Well, how is quality achieved in Agile? Some of them are already mentioned in the previous one, but since we combined workshop results and, and, and brainstorms, some overlap is there. So quality is achieved, of course, by doing a lot of testing in the sprints. Uh, by not having separate test levels, but doing them in the sprint, making everyone responsible. Um, quality is a fixed thing, of course. So if we need more time to test, we build less functionality, we limit the scope. Um, we migrate continuously, so we get feedback loop, we do production monitoring, we do a lot of integration, of course, and we use tooling, high level of automation, and virtualization tools in order to ensure and, and simulate agile systems. And when the team makes a failure, it doesn't really matter because we continuously improve. And I think one of the best things to achieve quality is, of course, to make a feature flip, which is on the right upper 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 note posted, uh, where we say uh, we work as a team on a complete end-to-end -end solution rather than just on a siloed system that we need to integrate. But we work on complete solutions that we will build from the, from, from the start, front end to the back end, and we complete the customer journey and then with fixed quality. So those are some ways that we achieve quality in Agile. And if you look at those things, they're all taken care of. So the traditional test managers list that I showed you, yeah, we can gray out some of those stuff, of course. 
So that makes us think like, what should we do as a test manager? Is there a future for us? And I'd like to uh, share with you, like I promised, uh, some of the settings where I think a test manager actually has a difference. But before I do that, I'd like to make an honesty call. Because yeah, if I convince you that there's a value as a test manager in these settings, am I doing the right thing? Because as a test manager, I'm tend to seek out ways to stay in demand and add my value. But is that what the organizations want? Because organizations don't really care about test managers or something. And they just want their end result. So there might be a message which is bigger than my message. And that is, well, get to do something else because test managers are dying race. And there are organizations that limit the test management layers big time. So there might not be a future there. But then still, I believe there is some added value, at least in the following years, because I've been around in, in organizations where I thought I added value, but my role did add value and was appreciated, and I call that the test manager's role. So let's look into that. The results that I'm going to show you is, uh, is the results of uh, another workshop that I did with Jan Jaap Kanagieter. Uh, where we uh, discussed uh, settings and uh, we had a big group, I think it was about 60 people uh, in, in the room where we had brainstorms about what roles do you appreciate the most, what do you think is most value, and what should we do in that role? And I will share those with you. So one thing that we did, we found out a lot of settings and we did some dot voting and uh, we have some ones that are more popular, more likely uh, to, to add value than the other. And, uh, this is the, the, the ones that I want to explain to you. So I think test manager can add value in the following settings. Uh, when you have an organization that needs to meet compliance and regulations, you might have somebody thinking about, do we add all, all the, uh, the good right things in the tests and do we have coverage on those regulations? If you're working with one, more than one team on the same project, you might have some inter-team dependencies and you want to coordinate the quality and the testing over those teams. Good rule for a test manager. If you have formal acceptance, there are settings where that's really important. Uh, you might need the test manager. Also, when there's a lot of integration testing needed, uh, you might want to have somebody focusing on getting the integration right. And then you have slightly different roles, I think, uh, but nevertheless, also uh, of great value, and uh, the, the more HR manager that is taking care of a lot of testers, of group of testers, and people that are working constantly on getting the test craftsmanship higher in the organization. And I like to introduce those settings uh, by, uh, by, uh, by introducing some friends of mine. These are my uh, virtual personas, uh, Stefan, Julian, and Andreas. I will start off with them, and they will be telling you uh, what, uh, what they are doing in their daily job and how they think they can add value. So let us start by Andreas. He's a little bit older uh, and he's gained seniority so he can play the role as overall test manager. And when you ask him, what's your mission? He says, well, I ensure that all the teams in the project, in the project are working on the right tests. And why should you bother about that? He says, well, I want to reduce overlap, prevent gaps, and the teams should work efficiently on overall quality. Interesting mission. So what do you do, Andreas? Well, what Andreas is doing, and you see some of the old test management things in there, like defining the overall quality strategy, watching boundaries between teams. Uh, he's doing risk analysis and monitoring the risks. And uh, you saw also in the list of the earlier workshop that a lot of people do more risk analysis. Well, that's needed in these kind of settings when more than one team are working on the same item. What's also important is to make sure that definitions of done are in line. Because there's no use to integrate your software and have as a team that has testing deeply involved on the on, on, on the on the definition of done and do thorough testing if you integrate that with a team that doesn't have testing at all on the definition of done, just as an example. Um, so you would monitor that all the teams do their test coverage, work on the things that are in the quality strategy. If the uh, the risk analysis shows that non-functional testing is important, which very often is. Somebody should watch over whether they actually do that. And maybe you should help teams to reach an acceptable level of testing. If they have problems with doing proper testing because they're developers and not testers. 
or whether you think the testers should learn more, it might be wise to do that. And of course, in the end-to-end, end-to-end testing is necessary. I like this a lot because I gave some presentations about what I think should be basic concept of the agile test quality, uh, agile quality strategy. And uh, these five items I've presented quite, uh, quite a bit. And I think there's some overlap. They, they, they make each other stronger. Because it says we need to know as a test manager what we need to test and who's testing it at what stage. We need to provide dashboard information or intelligence about where the project is going or the release is going so we can maybe change things, set priorities in a different order or shift load balance work over various teams. We lay responsibilities low in the team so they should be doing their own tests and they're responsible for their own testing and quality but we might be auditing the work in order to ensure that that's in place. And if we notice that it's not, we should be coaching them. We should be training them in order to make it better. And then not all the tests might be fitting in the sprint. Think about the end-to-end -end testing or uh, tests that need special skills that are not available in the team, like security testing or something. We might need to organize that. We like to have them in the team, but maybe we need to organize that. And it has great benefits. So we. Enhance the overall quality, we have more risk control, more transparency, we take away bottlenecks, and teams become more efficient if we train them well. But note what Andrea says, I don't want to have uniformity in the way that the teams test, because that's up to them. That's not my task. If we're working towards a single, single release, uh, they might be thinking about the acceptance. And Andrea of Stefan, is uh, the acceptance manager. So he no longer calls himself a test manager, he calls himself an acceptance manager. And he says, I ensure that all the parties that I work with focus on the right things and know what's needed in order to have a form of acceptance. Because I want to succeed or mission as a project or as a release without late surprises. And um, that's applicable, I think, when, uh, when you have one system that it supports a lot of parts of the organization. So you have different user groups that want to use the system and you cannot change something without well, asking them if they're okay. But whether you have one product owner that has no authority to decide. So you have a lot of people that need to decide. And uh, when you're working with different suppliers, so you have contracts, people that are outside your own organization, but you need to work together in order to have that one solution. And you have very often quite a bit of political environment uh, issues there as well if you have different contracts so the benefits of course that you all work towards the same goal and that you reduce your your surprises and uh, what he's doing or uh, our acceptance manager he's working on acceptance criteria make sure that they are included and they are clear he does a lot of stakeholder management he keeps track on the progress and uh, stimulates collaboration and by doing that he becomes a trusted wing partner my own experience with this role is when I was building a mobile network. The Dutch uh, Telecom was uh, building an own mobile network, not for communication uh, by phone, but to have machine-to-machine -machine communication. Um, and uh, I was overall at the test manager. And when I came on the job, I started talking with all the different parties and contractors. And I found out that I was missing something. And what I was missing was we didn't think about how we, how, how we should accept. So start, start with the end in mind, what happens if we do all the testing and, and who's going to accept that? So I looked around and I found, finally found my project manager and said, are you the one who's going to formally accept the solution if we integrate all the different stuff from the different suppliers? And he said, yes, that's me. He tried to look around so that he could find somebody else, but then he found out that he was the one. So do you understand that your suppliers were probably on the day present you the, the solution and gift wrap it because they want to give it on the day and they want to have it accepted and they want to send the invoice. So it's very difficult for you to accept because can you trust them? How, how are you going to do that? And I suggested him to say like, I can be your test manager or your acceptance manager. I can start a witness process where I engage with the development process and with the different suppliers and talk with them about testing and I go to them and I say, I offer my knowledge, but I'm also looking for how you deal with the quality and the risks and the, and the problems that you have. In order to know that you took quality seriously and to know that you took your testing seriously, 
So I trust the quality of the system. So on the day that you gift wrap your, your, your solution and go to, to the acceptance party, and I'll be standing next to you and I'll be saying, hey, they did a good job. They took quality quite seriously. So I think you should trust them if they say it's good. Or if you don't work along with me or you mess up, I will be telling the other thing. I'll go standing next to the customer and then I'll say, I shouldn't really trust it because, well, they didn't take quality that seriously. And it opened great doors. So we made some witness process where we say we have some goals uh, we have some activities. The numbers here are referred to the paragraphs in the plan uh, where we say, let's sit together, let's do some auditing, do some witness processing in order to have quality in there and create transparency on what the quality is. If we talk about transparency, we talk about progress reports straight away. And some people might have heard uh, about my supreme mapping, which is just a simple picture. This is an example. Uh, not a real life one uh, of a web shop where we say we have different parties working together but we know there are three 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 product uh, features uh, being added to release one and they need to collaborate and they need to be integrated and they need to be finished and tested as well but this is just a picture to visualize to make testing and and the dependencies visible on management level and to talk about quality on a management level, which works great. But the key word is integration, of course. So it's time to call Julia upon stage because she's an integration manager. And she's having a slightly different focus because she's focused on customer journeys. She wants a full integration of all the components and systems so we can complete customer journeys and actually deliver value. That's applicable, of course, when we have products or changes that involve multiple systems. And I don't think it involves DevOps organizations because then it's taken into account, but not all the organizations do DevOps. But if you take integration seriously, you have an early detection of integration problems, you probably have a better quality and a better user experience. And I think it's very important you start sharing knowledge on the system landscape. Because in bigger organizations, my experience is that there are a lot of people with a lot of knowledge, but the knowledge is limited to their domain, their island, their system, and they lack overview of the whole systems. So if you have an integration manager, he can have the wider overview and share the knowledge and make sure that's available. So we have a better efficiency, save a lot of money. But the key words, of course, no problems with integration at a later stage, a better quality, and a good user experience. And Julie's doing a lot to achieve that. So she's managing the environments. She's ensuring that there's virtualization in place so we're not dependent on, on the other systems and can start the integration and interface testing in the early stage. Uh, she's participating in the Scrum of Scrums because she knows what needs to be integrated and she can compare the progress of the one team with the other team and combine them and say like, remember you have to integrate with the other team uh, talk with them because they have uh, some delay. See how you can do that. So there's a lot of communication, etc. And she might be drafting customer journeys and end-to-end -end scenarios if they are not available. And by doing that, she becomes a quality ambassador and she has a progress information about whether the end-to-end -end customer journey actually can be achieved. My own experience story was in the, end, in the energy market where we were having a big project where we're making a lot of small adaptions in, in many of the systems. So the adaptions themselves might not have been that challenging, but getting the end-to-end -end process working and making the customer journey a happy journey was a challenge. And there were a lot of things lacking in this project. And um, there was no architecture, uh, it was not really clear what the interfaces were, the acceptance criteria were not clear, and requirements were not really traceable. So I was really challenged as a test manager because I wanted to prove that the quality was okay. And I wanted to ensure that we had that proof as early as possible so I could reduce the amount of late surprises. So like Julie with the focus on customer journey, I kind of defined some end-to-end -end scenarios, some customer journeys where I said to the product owners, there were like eight or 10 product owners in the project. Uh, I said to them, uh, do you agree that if we cannot complete these few customer journeys, which are high level basic customer journeys. We're not done yet, we're not ready. And they agreed on that. And I say, 
okay, but I spent a lot of time trying to find out what the interfaces were between teams and between systems. And those customer journeys run over various systems, so they run over those interfaces. So if we don't test those interfaces, if we don't test the integration between the agent systems, then I will quite sure know that the end-to-end -end scenarios won't work if we start testing them. So by that, I came up with, let's say, 40 integration tests that I had defined. And I could make a burn down chart and say, like, before we do the end to end testing, we need to do the integration testing. And uh, this is the rate at we, which we should do them. So we go about and test it. And integration testing is not done with you as a team, but you have to work with the other team as well. And it was quite a challenge for many of those teams. They did not really know how to do that. And uh, it was very difficult to get them into the mode that they could collaborate and actually do good integration testing. And integration testing can be quite simple and done within each sprint if you have small system, eh, when you're working on a component level. Uh, but if you start integrating services or systems or maybe just organizational things, it doesn't really fit into the release or in, in the sprint anymore. So that's why you need to have separate organized test phases like my end-to-end -end user customer journey tests as well. So it might be a role for the test manager. You notice that there's a lot of synergy, right? And overlap between the roles of Julie, Stefan, and Andreas. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. I think the, the keynote is uh, that if we lay responsibilities low within the team, and there's a lot of inter-team dependencies and a lot of things that we need to take care of, it's a small chance that all the teams are doing that by themselves in a proper way because they have a focus on the content and they should have a focus on the content and therefore they lack the overview. So it might be worthwhile to have somebody that actually has an overview, has a wider scope, because, well, I use this typewriter with the monkey, what's the chance that the teams independently uh, do that by themselves without any problems, without losing too much time, without leaving gaps or having overlap? That's like that the monkey types out Shakespeare, uh, Sonat, or something. Uh, and that's very unlikely. In the workshop that we did with Janja Abkanagieter, um, we also asked them like, what is the do's and the don'ts for a test manager? And I merged them into one slide, but basically they say test managers should collaborate, they should coach, they should communicate, um, they should talk, be approachable, help and advice. Yes, all that is there. They should be quality and better, but they shouldn't do the old management stuff, like micromanagement, telling people what to do. They should give the teams responsibility, but not tell the teams what they should do and interfere with their internal affairs. They should have a long-term focus, bigger than a sprint, et cetera. Uh, and they should not be a test manager and a tester because then they fail to have the overview and they will get in a squeeze. So there might be thing to think about for yourself, like what's your modus operandi and what do you like best and how can you add those skills? Talking about skills, this is Jasmine's territory. Jasmine likes to develop craftsmanship. And uh, she's a practice lead, and she says, I ensure that we exchange experiences and develop our profession uh, so that we keep adding value and keep excelling our testing and, uh, and, and, and show our added value. And that's, I think, extremely applicable when you have big organizations that are willing to invest in their testers. And yeah, you get better testers, better tests, better quality and happier customers. So that's good. So what does the practice lead do? He coaches his testers, he organizes sessions, courses, stimulates maybe that testers visit conference or do hackathons, that kind of stuff. Keep their knowledge up to date, and manage the test community and promote the, the importance of testing altogether. And so that's a good thing as well, I think. And there are two crew members that I didn't really introduce yet, but due to time restrictions, I'm not going to go into much detail. But it's the compliance officer takes care of the compliance. But that one has, of course, great overlap with the acceptance manager because compliance is checking the acceptance criteria, but then a certain amount of subset of acceptance criteria. And the manager of the test pool does a lot of things that Jasmine is doing, but has the HR part as well. So let's enter the finale of this webinar. Um, quality is embedded in agile development. So a lot of the tasks that the traditional test manager is doing, we can gray out is no longer needed. Uh, but there are some settings 
that I showed you after my honesty call that actually deliver value and are appreciated highly in the organizations that I come with and will play that role. Uh, but in the workshop for 60 people, they come up with those as well. So we met Stefan, Julie, Andreas, and Yasmin and showed how they can add value as a test manager. And that might be very interesting because with that information, you can look around in your own organization and seek out what role fits you the best and uh, identify that and try to translate that. Talk with us, your customer, your stakeholders about uh, what, what their needs are and how you can add value. Uh, and you can use some of the information in slides maybe to market yourself and make clear that you have a distinctive role, you add value by that, and that you fulfill a need that is in many of those bigger projects. Do that and show what you're worth. Align with your stakeholders, but make sure you're very good in that. Because most of the roles that I showed you, there are only a few of them needed in the organization. So rather than having a test manager on 10 projects, this will be the bigger project, and we only need one test manager. So there will be some kind of shakeout, I'm afraid, uh, because we don't need that many test managers up in the pyramid. So be very good, or find something else to do. In the book that I refer to, uh, we made a transition matrix in 2012, five years ago, where we said uh, from certain roles, it's likely to transform or trans uh, transit into other stages, uh, other roles, and not all the roles that are responsible. And we reassessed that in our 2070 workshop last May, um, where you see the test manager can also become an agile coach or security coach or non-functional coach or whatever, or the end-to-end -end director, the acceptance integration manager. But there are many roles outside of the ones that came, came as a result of this workshop, because this is just the input of the people in the workshop. And it's limited to kind of testing roles. Uh, two weekends ago, uh, I spent the weekend in England with some uh, 12 uh, other test, uh, test uh, freaks, uh, and we are called that the peer conference, right? Um, and as an uh, exercise, we put on uh, the safe poster on the wall and did an exercise where we say, as test manager or quality driven manager or whatever, um, where can we add value or prom promote quality or help quality achievements? Uh, within the safe framework and you see there's a lot of post-its this is work in progress so you're the first to see this um, but there's a lot of things where we can grow into but note that if you shift left and go up in the in, in higher levels of the safe framework you encounter new areas which are for many organizations or many test managers still new territory you talk with business people you talk uh, uh, with operational people and uh, that's a different language that you need new skills. But there's a lot of things to be gained. So that concludes my webinar. Um, the benefits is thing. We looked at the activities of the test manager, how they were changing. We shared some settings so you can recognize them, where you can have a value as a test manager. You can recognize them, talk about it, and promote it to your marketing and make a difference. And we shared a little bit of information about the alternative roles. And I hope that helps you to get a focus on what you want to do in the near future. Now you can add value as a test manager. So I wish you success with making the difference. Thank you very much. There again, thanks a lot. I think that again, uh, from, from the side and from having seen this topic uh, reviewed a number of times, I think that you did incredibly and you had quite a lot of, of, of insights. So, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, before we move over to um just a second before i move over to um the q a part and we do have a couple of section of questions that, that we want to go over i do want to talk a little bit about uh practice who's actually sponsoring these sessions and hosting and, and a couple of other activities that are coming down the road so first of all about practice guys in case you haven't uh heard about uh, us already it's a pretty cool q management solution again not related to their camp but they're hosting the session so just that you know uh it's a pretty amazing Q management tool, it's very intuitive, yet it's very professional and flexible. It integrates with everything that you're actually working with. And uh, we have a two-week evaluation license, so if you just are looking for something to, to understand if you can do better test management for your testing team, go ahead and, and uh, use our two-week evaluation license from the practice site. Um, I want to talk about another uh, event that is coming up, uh, actually towards the end of November. This is the online test con. 
And actually, they can also talk in one of our earliest, earlier online test conferences. This is actually a full-blown testing conference that is, first of all, 100% online, so you don't need to travel anywhere, and you can just attend it from your home, your office, wherever you want, and it's 100% free. So again, the same type of, of sessions that we get from all the very big conferences, for example, this year we have uh, James Spah actually doing a keynote and, and some uh, additional very interesting people talking. So it's very recommended. And again, you can go to onlinetestconf.com and uh, sign up for that. Uh, but again, enough of plugins here. Uh, there, can, there have been a couple of interesting questions that were asked during the session. Uh, I'm sure we won't have time to go over all of them. But there are a couple that I think are, are more interesting, and I would really appreciate if you can go over them a little bit. Uh, you read them out? Because yes. I don't have them on my screen. Uh, you should be able to find them, but I will read them out anyways. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll, um, I'll yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Um, it says here that whether it's educating your good testers or agile de development teams, what can the traditional test manager bring? Meaning, and, and I guess that it's a little bit about, imagine one test manager who will not go over all the different personas and you need to focus him very much. What is the biggest thing, the, the one, two or three biggest things that this test manager transitioning to an agile team or, or to a new testing team should actually bring with him? From what should he, she or she actually actually start in there? I think if I understand the question right, and my answer would be uh, the one slide with the do's and the don'ts. So you could, you, you could answer this question by, by mentioning a lot of knowledge or skills, uh, so practical, practical stuff. Um, but isn't the value in, in empowering the teams, uh, make sure that they can do what they want best. So that could be the coaching as well. Um, and, and creating the overview in the rest of the organization. So be a quality ambassador and talk to the organization and say like, these things need to be in place and translate that to the teams and say like, you're the professional teams, make sure that this works. I can help you with that, uh, but you won't get much interference by the, by, the, by the other peoples because we talked about it and I'm the one who's bringing you the message. Find a clever solution to ensure this kind of types of tests. Is that an answer you think to the question? I think that it's a very good start. Uh, and I think that again, as, as a manager of the transition team should actually be nice. Um, there's another question that actually I have it and I had it while, while going over your slides and it comes from questions that I have been asked actually in, in London about two weeks ago when I was there. Um, and I want to, to take from your experience, and again, looking from the, from the QA manager's perspective, and we were talking about Agile and DevOps back in the day. And they were saying, and this was a couple of people just nodding their heads saying that they see the same, where their teams are, quote unquote, saying they're switching over to Agile, maybe even to DevOps, but they're not doing it correctly. And so it becomes very frustrating for the testing team that it becomes a kind of broken waterfall model where not the whole team is, is responsible for quality and, and there are a number of other principles that are not taken and not done. And what should the role of that test manager, of that QA manager be in those roles where senior management is maybe convinced they're switching to Agile, but, but we have quite a lot of criticism. How should we convey that in a way that is productive and constructive? Yeah, I think the answer that, 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 that depends on, on what level you are operating. And it also depends on how big your organization is, of course, because in really big organizations, it's hard to, to get to the C level and talk with them. Uh, but um, I think as a test manager, I should meet up with the agile coaches or the agile transition team kind of uh, group of people. Uh, and I noticed that if, since I do agile coaching as well, but if I'm in a tester's role and I meet with the agile coach, he's really appreciates that I understand what he's doing and he can help me very much with getting quality in. So what I said about getting the, 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 the testing in the definition of done might not be the task of the test manager at all because the, the agile coach can do that. And so, so I think collaboration with, with, with the agile sponsors uh, is a good way to get quality in the back door. But if, if, if the agile is not working, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid 
that 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 a lot of things will get more difficult. Okay. Um, a question here from from a user, and again from your experience, and I know that we have quite a lot of people who are not necessarily test managers. Um, what should a fresh tester or a starting tester focus on today? If you were to be seeing a bunch of testers who say, hey, we're just getting started, we have been in this business for a couple of months, where should <laughs> they be focusing their, their efforts? Uh, I would go for technique. I, I, I would be uh, excel in, 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 in technical testing. So know your test automation and hook on with the developers. And uh, depending on in what branch you are, uh, think about new techniques like artificial intelligence, data analysis, uh, big data kind of things, uh, and, and get an idea how you can test that in the future. So that's the freaky part. Yeah? So I start thinking in my free time about how that is. But that, that, those will be, there are some techniques that will enter your work domain in a few years. So if you start thinking about that right now, you have an advantage when that comes. But in the meantime, uh, I think a lot of the older testers have problems with technique. So I'm generalizing it. Uh, so if you want to do the technical stuff, that's good. Okay. And, and maybe the last question, because we're, we're running out of time. And I think that you talked a little bit about it when you were talking about your complex project of uh, deploying, I think that you were talking about a mobile uh, network solution. Yeah. Um, in the context of more complex projects, such as Internet of Things implementations and, and places where there is more to software because we have hardware and layers and, and integrations, how would you see the role of the test manager in there? And I think that you answered it in your slides, but, but I think that it, it's worth just to go over that and, and maybe focus it a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think the integration part is really important. So think about what integrations you want to do first and, and drag that as up front as much as possible. Maybe start with integrating rather than building functionality. Um, if you have a lot of different layers with different contractors, uh, it's more the acceptance side of the story. So go, go talk with the people and explain what your role is in order to get formal acceptance. Um, and get them together, I think. Okay. So I think that this is um, the time that we have for the questions today. So first of all, for everyone who was asking about the presentation, we have been recording the presentation and it will be available. You will get an email from us um, in the coming minutes, maybe until tomorrow. I think that it takes a little bit just to process the, the recordings. Um, but, uh, Obviously, for Derek Yan, thank you very much for this great presentation. Again, even for, from my perspective, it was very, very fruitful and, and very informative. And again, thanks for everyone else uh, for coming to the session. So Derek Yan, any final words? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening, because uh, webinars are sometimes uh, difficult to have the, 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 the patience and, and, and the concentration, since you only have the slides in front of you. But, uh, Thanks for, for sticking out with me, hanging out till the end, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it's beneficial. Thank you. Excellent, so there, Ken, thank you very much. And for everyone else, you're invited to our next webinar on the practice series. It's going to be, again, uh, around next month, and it's gonna be on, actually, some very uh, down-to-earth tools in order to become a key cast tester on uh, today's changing environments. So thank you very much to everyone uh, in here. Uh, we'll be signing off, and have a great day. Bye-bye, and thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.